All right, good morning. We're going to go over in this video the uh, Unit 6, Lesson 10, Cumulative Practice Problems, and talk about the um, solutions to these problems. So starting off with this one here on the first page, which is Andre wanting to buy a buy backpack. Normal price of the backpack is $40. He uh, notices the store sells backpack having a 30% off sale. What's the sale price of the backpack? So if we're taking 30% of a number, we're basically going to take 10% three times. So 10% of $40 equals $4, right? Because all you have to do is move the decimal point over one place to the left. So if it equals $4, that means 30% would be would equal $4 times $3, which equals $12. Now that's of course not the sale price of the backpack. That's actually how much money is taken off of the backpack. So that means that the final sale price is $40 minus $12, oops, minus $12, and that equals $28. So the sale price of the dollar of the backpack is $28. Okay. Next question. On the first math exam, 16 students received an A. On the second one, 12 received an A. What is the percent decrease? When you do percent decrease, it's the final amount minus the initial amount divided by the initial amount. Okay? And that's sort of the verbal model that you use for all percent increase decrease. Okay? So that means that we're going to do 12 minus 16, which is going to equal negative 4. And that's going to be then divided by 16 because that's the initial amount. That's going to give us a negative, zero negative, sorry, 25%, which means a down 25%, uh, and that's a percent decrease. So we would say a percent decrease is 25%, okay? And that's what our answer would be for that problem. Okay, now continuing, solving equations. In this problem here, these problems, we have to just find the solution for x. A couple of ways that we can go about it. What we're, what we're going to do in most of these cases is do the division first before instead of distributing. Some cases, we'll go ahead and do the distribution. Um, in, in reality, it doesn't really, really matter which way you do it as long as you follow the rules properly. So if we see that it's 2 times something gives us 14, if I divide by 2, I'm going to go a little, little thinner on the stroke here. <laughs> if I divide by 2 and I divide this by 2, that's going to mean that x minus 3 is going to equal 14 divided by 2 is 7. So if I say, okay, what number of minus 3 equals 7? I can find out by adding 3 to this and adding 3 to this. And that means that my solution here is x equals 10. Sorry, I'm missing my keys today. If I do the same thing over here, if I divide by negative 5 in this case first, and I divide by negative 5, that's going to mean that what's in the parentheses here, x minus 1, that's going to equal negative 8. So then I'm going to say to myself, all right, what number minus 1 equals negative 8? Well, I can find out if I add 1, and I add 1, and I see negative 8 plus 1, and that means that x is going to equal negative 7. All right, oops. Okay. That equals negative 7 for that. Now, for the next one, for letter C, this time we're going to, once again, divide by 12. And I think that dividing instead of distributing is going to be the case, is going to be the best case scenario for most people. Um, not always, as we'll see, perhaps maybe in the next one, we might see think about um, think about doing some distribution just to kind of get rid of our fractions, but we'll see that even multiplying or dividing is going to work as well. So we divide by 12. This is going to be 2, so that means x plus 10 equals 2. So what number plus 10 equals 2? We can find out by subtracting 10. We can subtract because we're doing the opposite of what it says to x, right? So 2 minus 10, that is going to equal negative 8. So x is going to equal negative 8 in this case. With this one, we'll be the fraction... We can think about it as dividing by one-sixth on both sides, but when we have a fraction, it's often easier to just think about multiplying by the reciprocal of that fraction. So we're going to multiply 6 here, and we're going to multiply 6 here. That's going to give us x plus 6, because that's what's in parentheses, and that's going to equal 11 times 6, which is 66. So that means that x is going to equal, if I subtract 6, x is going to equal 60 for this case. Okay. You can check these answers. Obviously, I do recommend you check these answers when you're doing these on your own. Um, with this case here, this one here is going to be one of those instances where it's like, mm, either or could work nicely. But with a fraction here, it's often very easy to just go ahead and multiply by the reciprocal of this fraction. So 5 sevenths, we're going to multiply by 7 fifths on both sides. So by doing that, that gets rid of the fraction, makes it 1, and then just leaves us with x minus 9. But over here, 7 fifths, watch this. We're going to go 25 divided by 5, which is 5, then times 7, that's 35. So that means that x minus 9 is going to equal 35. 
And then if I add 9 on both sides, that means x is going to equal 44. Okay, so our solution for that one is going to be 44. See how we add 9 here, and we add 9 here, and that gives us 35 plus 9, which is 44. Okay, next page. We're going to select all the expressions that represent a correct solution to the equation 6 times x plus 4 equals 20. So, which of the following ways can we get the solution? Now, what might help you here is to solve this first and kind of think, okay, 6 times what number gives us 20? The number here actually is going to be something a little stranger. Um, we can think of it as we're going to do, um, like, so if I divide by 6, that's going, to be, that's going to be 3 and a third. And then 3 and a third, so what number plus 4 equals that? That's actually 2 thirds, negative 2 thirds at that. So not a super easy solution to get. But let's go ahead and look at some of the ways that we could possibly get that. If we go 20 minus 4, that equals 16. 16 divided by 6, that actually equals negative 2 thirds, so that one's not going to go. If I do 1 sixth of 16, that's not going to get it, because we know that we're going to get a negative number here. If I go 20 minus 6 minus 4, that's not going to be negative. If I go 20 divided by 6, that's going to be um, that's going to be 3 and 2 thirds, 3 and a third, excuse me, minus 4. That's going to work. That'll give us the number we want. If I go 1 sixth of the difference of 20 and 24, 1 sixth of that is not a no, I take that back. That is going to work. Yep, that's going to be, that's going to work. And if I go 20 divided by minus 24 and then divide by 6, that's also going to yield the correct answer as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the last problem on here, and then we'll call it a video. Okay, so this final problem here, we have, uh, we have Lynn and Noah solving an equation, 7 times x plus 2 equals 91. Lynn uses the distributive property, but Noah starts by dividing, by each, dividing each side by 7. So we're just going to do this equation both ways. So starting with the distributive property. If I multiply 7 times x and 7 times 2, that's going to give us 7x plus 14 equals 91. Okay, because that's 7 times x plus 2. And if I subtract 14, that's going to equal 7x equals 77. And then if I divide by 7, that's going to be x equals 11. All right, now if we do it the other way, where we just divide first, 7 into 91, that's going to be x plus 2 equals, and that's going to be, let's see, 91 divided by 7, that's going to be 13, 13, and then if I subtract 2 on both sides, that's going to equal x uh, is going to equal 11. So we get the same solution in both, case, both cases, and that's what the solutions might look like. Okay, so I hope this video helps you out, and uh, hope you have a wonderful day.